Stop buying borderless stickers. That's what I think you should probably do or at least considering doing and most likely what I'm going to be doing for the foreseeable future. In this video today, we're going to be going over my thoughts and opinions on the updated uh, state of the borderless sticker market uh, for uh, obviously majors and stuff like that. I'm going to talk about what my strategy is going to be going forward for borderless stickers overall, what I think a lot of the problems and pitfalls and downfalls are at the current point, and if I was going to be buying some of these borderless stickers, what the main criteria I'm going to be looking out for is uh, and how I'm going to use that strategy going forward, like looking ahead to Shanghai and then also into the 2025 majors for CS2 as well. Um, with that being said, <clears throat> first, I just want to mention real quick. If you are looking to sell any of your CS2 items, uh, could be literally anything and everything. I'm buying agents, cases, capsules, uh, guns, skins, knives, whatever. Uh, if you're looking to turn that into cold hard cash or crypto or any other payment method, definitely hit me up over on Twitter. It's going to be the first link in the description below. Uh, I've been buying all kinds of stuff as of late. My cash trading is ramping up back up into full force. Uh, we're getting a ton of deals done. We're helping people um, cash out safely, efficiently, and effectively. Uh, and of course, by selling them, you're helping support me, my channel, and my content, which would be awesome. With that being said, Let's get right into this. So, obviously, right now we have the Copenhagen sale going on, and we have seen what's kind of going on with the Copenhagen uh, stickers. It seems like a lot of them are dropping pretty significantly now that the sale has started, and it seems like overall across the board, when I think back to what was going on with Paris at this time, Paris had so much hype and so much fanfare, and it was the main thing that everyone was talking about, and yes, CS was at a crazy point at this time last year, because this was like pretty close to peak CS2 hype. Um, there was so much talk, so much uh, content, so much investing, so many different things going on, and overall, a lot of that has died down. I think it is slowly and more organically kind of growing now. And I think in the long run, things are still going to be okay. Um, but things have significantly died down from that crazy period. Part of the reason being, hey, a ton of people got burned by Paris. The CS2 release wasn't that great. And we got borderless stickers again in Copenhagen that uh, also do not look that great. So uh, why is this leading me to say that you should, and I'm not going to be buying more borderless stickers um, this time around, and why I don't think you should either? Well, obviously, one of the main reasons is Paris uh, did not go so well. You know, we have stuff like even the Fanatic Paris Hollow, which was one of my favorite stickers uh, and one that I put some of the most money into from this thing. Um, it has been just absolutely decimated. This thing is down 62% um, over the past year. Obviously, uh, that doesn't really matter the, the last year because um, I don't know exactly what day the sale ended or whatever, but um, from when the sale ended, obviously this thing would even be significantly down. I believe it was like somewhere in November, I want to say, um, you know, maybe like 479 down to here. So, it's still down like over 50% in that time period. And obviously things are not slowing down. Things are still pointing in the wrong direction. But uh, the main reason why I don't think borderless stickers make any more sense. Now, obviously, I know you guys might be saying, hey, you were the Paris guy. You were so much talking about Paris, blah, 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 blah. And yes, I absolutely was because at that point, one of my biggest things is um, looking back to the past, looking at market trends, data, um, and, and really overall following the trends and, and not going against historical data. And at that point, um, stickers and capsules had historically always been profitable. You had always been able to make some amount of money. Now, you, sometimes you guaranteed to make big amounts of money, sometimes only little, but we had never really seen a major come and go where people had gotten absolutely wrecked, where people had lost a ton of money. Yes, you had something like RMR, but we even saw with RMR, depending on when you sold out or if you held on to them, uh, that you were still able to be profitable at some point. And again, RMR was also the ugliest stickers of all time. Paris was not that. Paris was going to be very, very good looking stickers. And we had never seen good looking stickers flop or underperform or whatever. So um, why would it have made sense for me to bet against them? Now, obviously, you know, it, in hindsight, looking back, there is some some things that uh you know maybe there was red flags to be avoided or whatever but again um we didn't really know exactly what was going to happen and and also part of it was we expected or some people were hoping that cs2 would be this big new release and uh part of the uh kind of investment thesis for paris was hey cs2 is going to explode and it's going to pop and even if it is super over invested or whatever we're still going to get a ton of new people in and uh whatever uh but obviously a lot of that didn't happen uh and paris ended up wrecking people but also that we keep getting new borderless stickers so not only did paris end up being profitable but we're getting new New borderless stickers on top of that and one of my big things for investing in Paris was trying to get those unique borderless stickers because those are the big money makers. When you look back to Stockholm and Antwerp and Paris and whatever, um, the stickers that have performed the best have been those unique borderless. But as we go forward into the future and continue to get more and more borderless sets, again, 
uh, when we look, uh, we can pull up this real quick and we can see stickers. Um, you can see our last five sticker sets, Copenhagen, Paris, Rio, Antwerp, and Stockholm. Four of the last five are borderless sticker sets. That is absolutely insane. That obviously shows that Valve is doing this. You know, this is what they're kind of going with right now. I don't know when they're going to slow down, when they're going to stop, if things are ever going to change up or whatever. But right now, if you are buying a borderless sticker, even if it is unique, which is your biggest opportunity to make money, even when not really a lot of these are making money, we can kind of click through these real quick and see over the past year, you have Imperial, uh, one of the best stickers from the Antwerp collection. It is down 40%. We have Cloud9, which is just one of the best borderless stickers overall. It's down 39%. You have the Outsiders Antwerp Hollow, which is a unique still um, borderless sticker from Antwerp. It's down about 10%. You have the Tai Lu Stockholm Hollow, which is actually up. So there are some of these that are up, but uh, you know it's one of the few up 25% in the past year. And then you have a lower end unique borderless option from Stockholm that is down only 14% in the past year. Um, you can see that obviously a lot of these um, are down, but again, the unique borderless ones are the ones performing the best. But if Valve is going to keep Pumping out these borderless sticker sets, obviously no sticker is going to be safe. More and more of these unique ones, even if they are a good investment for a little bit of time or remain safe for a little bit of time or have a higher chance over a little bit of time or whatever, these majors are going to keep coming out. We have Shanghai in just a couple of months. And then in 2025, we're going to have one or two or three majors or whatever. And how many of those are going to be borderless? And how many of these teams and stickers, um, you know, you could be investing uh, previously in the Antwerp Cloud9 Hollow as a unique borderless hollow. And then, hey, a year from now, you could have three Cloud9 um, hollows. And it just doesn't really make sense. The risk there is too great. Now, if the reward was insane and we just saw, um, you know, the, the good stickers just continuing to climb and climb and climb, uh, but you have a chance of also getting wrecked yeah you could maybe make it a gamble you could maybe say that the uh risk reward ratio is there and you could maybe say um that it makes some sense but right now when the rewards aren't that high the risk of potentially having your uh unique borderless hollows or unique borderless stickers at all um get replicated uh is just not really worth it so um that is why i am saying that the it doesn't really make sense to buy any of these borderless stickers right now again when you look at the copenhagen set yes there are some cool unique ones koi looks really cool lin vision looks really cool um you know you even have some stuff like saw that some people like you have legacy you have ecstatic you have am call but we have another major coming up. I believe Shanghai is in December. And again, in that major, we have an opportunity for all of those teams to get a second borderless sticker. So really until a couple of things happen until one, we see whether or not Copenhagen is even going to be profitable. Uh, whether two, we see whether or not valve is ever going to release another bordered sticker set. Is it going to be Shanghai? Is it going to be one of these majors in 2025? I don't know. Um, but again, just like with Paris, I said, I wanted to follow historical data and trends, uh, and, and kind of follow where things were going. I want to do that now. I don't want to be the one to try and predict that. Oh, you know, valve's not going to keep making borderless sticker sets or, Oh, borderless stickers are about to pop in the future. Blah, blah, blah. No, I'm going to look at the signs, look at the data. To look at what's right in front of our eyes and say that, hey, borderless stickers are not the investment that they once were. It doesn't mean that they can't come back. If Valve releases one bordered sticker set or a couple bordered sticker sets in a row, borderless stickers could come back. They could come back in a big way. They could uh, all of a sudden be on everybody's radar and, and just end up being crazy awesome investments. But for right now, there is so much risk for such little potential reward. The only stickers that I'm even potentially looking at or even, uh, you know, considering a somewhat decent investment are going to be the unique borderless stickers for teams that do not have a possibility of getting a new borderless sticker. That is teams like Mavistar Riders. Again, this uh, organization is now rebranded to Mavistar Koi. So this Mavistar Riders sticker will continue to be unique. You do not have to worry about a clone of this coming out and really eating into the supply. You have Copenhagen Flames from Stockholm. Um, you have, uh, I don't really know if there's any other of these ones that I'd be looking at too much. You have Godsent, you have Sharks, you have Gambit. Um, those are all ones that I'd be looking at. You have Heroic because they do have, did have a logo change. Um, in Antwerp, I don't think there's as many options. The Outsiders Hollow is definitely one that I would take a look at. You have a different Copenhagen Flames logo in Antwerp that could be interesting. You have another heroic logo here, um, and yeah, that is pretty much it from there. Um, obviously, as we get newer and newer, uh, it's going to be tougher to find stickers that actually are interesting because, um, again, Paris just happened last year. A lot of these teams haven't disbanded or rebranded or, or changed teams or organizations or names or anything like that yet. Um, I don't even know if there's any from Paris that I'd really be looking out for too much. And then again, Copenhagen obviously just happened. But um, yeah, if you do end up hearing a team rebrands or a team uh, dissolves or disintegrates or whatever, yeah, they're, they're a unique board 
of those stickers could end up being good. But um, any of these stickers, like Cloud9 from Copenhagen, when a Cloud, a better looking Cloud9 sticker already exists, there's just no way, in my opinion, that this Cloud9 Copenhagen sticker could end up being a good investment. Also, if I was to buy borderless stickers, I'm looking at um, the cheaper, the better, because again, that's going to be more potential for uh, price appreciation in the future. And some of these prices have just gotten absolutely insane. Like this Cloud9 sticker, like I said, when it's not even unique, paying $10 for it, that is just ridiculous to me. But when you scroll down and see something like Amcall, when it's a unique borderless sticker for 49 cents, that could potentially make a little bit more sense and uh, is at least has a lot more investment room and potential in my opinion. So again, um, I just think all the signs right now point in the direction of not buying borderless stickers because there is just so many potential negatives and the uh, re reward ratio is really not there in my opinion. Um, now I do think capsules is a little bit different capsules um, of course have a bunch of different stickers and yes if a cap if a sticker in your capsule does end up getting reproduced that is going to hit the uh, overall demand for that capsule but still capsules are a little bit different they're obviously uh, obviously stickers are consumable as well but capsules are consumable and I think especially Stockholm and Antwerp had um, you know at least smaller um, inventories and are at least a little bit aged that I would be a little bit more inclined to buy Stockholm and Antwerp capsules than uh, stickers from any of these sets that are um, not looking so good, but even those I would be a little bit careful of. I just think there's much better opportunities out there in the markets right now uh, and much better places to look um, than looking at borderless stickers. And it, it really shames me to say that because borderless stickers and, and major stickers have obviously been a huge part of Counter-Strike and they've been a really cool um, and an awesome way to make money and, and investment and collect for a lot of people. But um, these uh, things just don't make sense right now. Uh, and again, with all the borderless sticker sets we've been seeing lately, all signs really need to point to Shanghai probably being borderless once again and uh, these stickers probably getting wrecked again in the short term, so I would watch out for that. But again, if you did want to buy some of these, I would look towards um, those teams that have logo change, that have changed organizations, or that don't exist at all anymore, because those ones at least hold a significant less amount of risk than many of these other ones, um, but still, it probably just doesn't make a lot of sense. So again, at least for right now, I would say stay away from the borderless stickers, um, but that doesn't mean things won't change once again in the future. Who knows? But this is pretty much of this video today, guys. Hopefully, I catch you in the next one. Until then, Peace.